Good day, everyone. Today, uh, you have two activities for your feasibility study, which are the market feasibility and calculation of projected sales, and then the other one is the financial plan. So first, uh, I will discuss to you the market feasibility and the calculations of sales. Okay, so we all know that in order to get the sales you know, or to compute for the sales, you need to multiply the price versus the quantity. Okay, so how are you going to have the sales if you do not know uh, how many are potential customers or potential target market will cater your products and services? Okay, so that's why I ask you to do a uh, guide questionnaire online and then send it, that to random people for you to have ideas or yeah, on what kind of target market you have, on how many target market you will be, then ano ba yung professional uh, capacity nila or buying power nila. So for you to able to be able also to adjust with uh, the plan that you are that you have in your um, uh, feasibility. So uh, it goes after the I don't know the menu, no? the price of the menu, the how many uh, people are you going to hire, no? based on the projected market. So there, this is the market feasibility process. So you have the general community level factors, demographic data, and then economic factor. So it is in a ko kanina. No? Demographic and then professional, student ba sila, male or female, and the edad nila. No? Sila ba ay may mga trabaho na involved in this factors. No? And then general community level factors. So for example, today. Uh, we are uh, in the middle of the pandemic. So, ano ba yung mga uh, limitations? No? And factors to specific, uh, factors specific to potential size, the traffic counts, no? malalaman nyo rin yan, based dun sa number na uh, reply dun sa survey ninyo. Approximately to the man's generators. Okay? So, kung gaano ba kalapit, accessible ba yung inyong establishment to the people who answered your, ano, your, uh, uh, online survey form, the competitive analysis, who are your competitors, direct and indirect, and then uh, you can see your initial case projection. Okay. So, market feasibility demographic data. So, you have already done this on your online survey question. So, I hope you consider putting the age, the income, the gender, occupation. Yeah, as well as the number of children at home, the home ownership, the use of automobiles, and other similar information. So this data about individuals are relevant because the segments for restaurants are often described in terms of the same factor. So demographics that are known to predict restaurant behavior. Okay. So for the economic factor, so today uh, we are having this uh, affecting this we are being affected by this factor so much because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Try to look or to research for the um, employability for uh, the year, you know, 2020 to 2021. And, the, and uh, based on that, you can do your uh, projected sales. You know? So because uh, based on the PowerPoint, it says here that the prevailing economic climate in community has a very, uh, large impact on the market feasibility of food service operations, so as well as the health you know, in the local area, okay, the disposable income of residents, you know, uh, at the situation uh, with regards to the uh, disposable income prices, or uh, if uh, the this uh, type of, or if this factor uh, Disposable income rises, meaning to say that uh, your restaurant will uh, be successful because uh, there are jobs you know, formulated as within the time frame that you will uh, do your market feasibility. Okay, so uh, if uh, as of today we are experiencing economic downturn, you no. Know, so when are you going to put up your restaurant? So you need to decide for that factor. 
uh, considering that factor, you know, the boom times and the bad times or economic or disposable income fall, economic downfall. Okay. So, however, the effect of economic prosperity and suppression affects various Western countries. So, based on the economic uh, situation of a certain place, no, uh, for an instance here, no, in Calipay City, in which most of you were going to put up their uh, feasibility establishment, your uh, future establishment. Okay. How are you going to to uh, Put how much the new price will be, you know? so that uh, also serves as your um, basis you know, economic factor. Okay. So the traffic count. So this uh, restaurants are usually developed along major thoroughfares, determining market feasibility requires of cars that pass by its potential location, which is used in determining which site is optimal. So this is uh, very useful because um, by doing this activity, you know, the, the counting of the number of cars that are passing the road you know, in which you will locate your visibility or your uh, restaurant or hotel, you, know, you can uh, be uh, the decision on whether you will put or not the establishment and specific location based on the total count or the traffic count. So um, you can do research for this because uh, we are have limited uh, or restricted uh, guidelines on uh, uh, coming out or uh, visiting a different sites nowadays because of the COVID. But if uh, the requirement permits you, for example, you uh, you do not uh, go under the uh, age restriction, you know? so you can go outside uh, considering the curfew as well. You can do this actual. So the traffic count, you know? counting of the number of cars that are passing by in the specific location in which you will put up your establishment. Okay, so traffic counts can usually be a big key of charge from the local chamber of commerce, highway department, officers, and agency, or other, other municipal, municipal offices. So you do not need to worry about a permit. Okay. So the demand generator, in which uh, these are the in which your traffic may come from, you know, so the shopping malls, or the creation of sports facilities, public facilities, museums, schools, and parks. So if your um, establishment will be located near the demand generator, you will be benefit from the traffic to be. Okay. Okay. For the competitive analysis, uh, this is a very crucial uh, factor to consider in market feasibility study. You know, because uh, the local market potential uh, for your concept should be shared among all the competitors. Okay? So you have you may have a direct or indirect competitor. You, know? you can be uh, you can conduct a market feasibility you know, from your competitors. And then uh, you can analyze the market feasibility and you can also identify what are the similar concepts within the geographic area, you know, comparable munition prices and even the country. So you can do research for your competitors, you know, from your competitors, you know, the existing competitors. Uh, in which your business is okay. Okay, so there are uh, different factors that uh, may uh, inform you on the phase projection, phase on so the demographic, the traffic pattern, the demand generators, and competitive analysis. And then, um, in order to create sales projection, you need to know the quantity or the number of 
customers and the price. Okay? So, when we see demographic data, this is the relative size of the local population. And uh, this is very useful in projecting the number of customers one to two. Also, the income formation, that is uh, very important. This, is, this can be found also in the demographic data, and it will assist in to the estimate of the price range in which people are willing to accept. You know, also, the economic factors are very important in price projection. Okay? So the common mistake for, for entrepreneurs is that they are basing the sales estimate on the data gathered during the boom times as well. So that's why they, they, uh, they are uh, having hard time in, uh, doing this during the low season or low time for the bus patch. So also, the traffic pattern is very crucial you know, because it serves as the demand generator. So you also need to consider in doing a traffic traffic pattern data, the places in which your um, uh, potential markets will be coming from are the demand generators. So, and uh, the competitive analysis, the competitions to surround your business can help you to determine uh, how much will be the customer shared to your market, or your customer market will be shared to you, and uh, in order for you to predict the price point against your competitor. Okay. So the detailed questionnaire uh, consists of the following, you know, the detailed demographic data, incoming from design, the eating patterns, the frequency in your preferences, price sensitivity, the average price food for lunch and dinner, then favorite eating places for various situations. Okay. So for hotel, the sales pattern will be influenced by the house count or the number of persons who occupy the guest room. And then the calculation should be based on the projected occupancy. So the different data or uh, hotel are available from different hospitality industry accounts here. So let's go now to the calculation of projected sales. Okay, so for the step one, okay, so this market research or the market research should indicate number of seats is or are necessary in for or for the new or renovated facility. Okay, so there are different uh, meal periods. You know? So the, during this meal period, how many likely Okay, so how many turnover may likely to happen? So uh, this can also be predicted or detected not only by a single customer, but uh, more than one customer. Okay, so how often a hit turnover happens, uh, including several factors as well as meal period, you know, how long is the meal period? How long uh, will the customer finish the meal? So, she turned over between 11.30 to a.m. to 1.30 p.m. In a fast food, uh, may be relatively high compared to that time time. So that's the cost of the type of food. And the types of menu we are uh, serving the guests. You know? so, so, in order to know how many people are coming in to so the total potential customer count or the number of anticipated seats is multiplied by the seat turnover in order to determine the customer count uh, meal period. So for example, within a week, so it is essential to make separate calculations for each meal or uh, for each meal during the week so because the total number of seats needed for the new renovated facility derived from the market research should represent the optimal 
during the demand period, for example, the Fridays and the Saturdays in a fine dining restaurant. So other meal periods are likely to have lower demand than expected customer count. And the example below shows the projected customer count in a college dining facility. Okay. For example, during Sunday, this college dining facility closed or are not operating. So for Monday, they have 600 customers. And then, um, okay, so for example, here Tuesday, 225 per breakfast, Wednesday, 250. Thursday 250, Friday 220, Saturday 100. So it differs according to the meal time, you know, to the, um, according to the meal period, okay? So you are the one who will project this in your, um, based on the uh, shipping capacity you have, okay? Uh, based on the uh, projected uh, customer count, you know? based on your questionnaires, the frequency of dining restaurants, what time of the day do you usually go to your restaurant in order for you to project the customer class. Of course, you need to consider the factors, you know, the peak times and the um, slack times, you know, the, the boom times and the bottom times. Okay? And then you, you just total, you just end. Uh, the customer count from the days that your uh, facility will be operating, okay? For customer count. And then for the average check estimate, so in order to determine the average check by using the actual average check of the operations already exist, so that's one way. Or the prices from the new menu if one is anticipated, that's another. So if a new operation is being planned, check the questionnaire results and the average for, for uh, similar operations or restaurants in the area. Okay. So check averages will be different from uh, the breakfast, lunch, and dinner in the college uh, facility example below. The estimates are in the right column. You have here the total number of pounds, of customer pounds, and then uh, you have this uh, average check per customer. Okay, so how are you going to know how much is the average check? Okay. So in order for you to know how much is the average check, you need to divide the sales versus the total number of customer pounds okay, in order for you to know how much each customer will be spending in your facility. So again, divide the total number of sales to the total number of customer counts. In customer counts in order for you to know the average check. Okay? So for the sales production for the entire year are completed by multiplying the weekly sales estimated by the number of weeks the operation is open during the year. So it is then However, to correct the seasonal fluctuations in the land, restaurant with an indoor pasture seven, seating 70 is likely to have bigger sales during the number of months. For the college dining example, the yearly sales as calculated as follows. The first week full of operation multiplied to 19,375 is equal to 581,212. And 50, so plus 10 weeks of summer school, 50% sales potential at 9,686, uh, so that's equivalent to 96,875 for a total of 678,821. Okay. Okay. So, uh, in order for you to compute for the sales projection for the year, so this is a week. So this is uh, for the uh, dining. 
So for the dining facility for a college uh, institution, of course, there will be some, there will be uh, months that they have classes. That's why uh, in this example, uh, the, the projected sales are separated. No, but in um, uh, standalone restaurants no, or food service facilities, you have this one week, um, week. So you have this one week and then you will multiply to how many uh, weeks in a month no, for you to know the monthly sales. No, multiply the weekly sales to the number of weeks per month and then multiply the monthly sales to number of months per year no, in order for you to know how much will be your projected sales. Now, again, that, that will be based on getting first the average count or the average check. No? And then, uh, of course, uh, in getting um, the average uh, or the sales per week, you need to know how many people are coming to your restaurant for a week. And then um, multiply multiply that to the uh, price of the menu that you are going to serve in order for you to know the sales. You know? And then um, in order for you to get the average check again. So again, in order to get the average check, it just need to a reciprocate formula. You know? You need to uh, divide the sales to the number of the guests that come into per week your facility. The guests that come into your facility within a week. So again, uh, separated by different meals. Okay. So that's it for the um, market feasibility and the calculation of the projected sales. I hope you something. Thank you very much. And feel free to ask questions if uh, there are topics unclear to you. Okay. Be safe.